Hi, I'm Nate, and this is Photo Learningism Speed Ramping in KDN Live. Yes, the real deal. Let's look at the pros, the cons, and maybe some room for improvement. Let's do that right now. Okay, so photo learningism, I'm Nate. Let's just get right into this with speed ramping and Kaden Live. I've talked about this tool a ton. Go check out some videos. I'm gonna get this right one day over there. <laughs> check out the playlist and get a good sense of how Kaden Live works and all the different amazing feature offerings it has. They have gone to include a, a speed ramping technology. It's called time remapping here in Kaden Live. And it works fairly well within the tool. There are some issues which I'll get to. So let's just talk through this and, and get into it. So very exciting possibilities here. First off, as soon as this came out, I was super excited because I've been waiting for this. I've been asking for it. So I was really excited that it's here. In order to activate it, what you have to do is right click on a clip and go to time remap. This is different, by the way, from change speed. They are two separate controls, and in fact, you can't layer them with each other. You can either do one or the other. If you do a change in speed, you can't do time remap. If you do time remap, you can't do change speed. So it's one or the other. That could be made clearer. Um, in fact, ideally, those would be one control, but right now, they're two separate uh, pieces, and uh, that's how they work. Change speed is to change the overall speed of a clip, in case you haven't used that before, and then time remap is to actually do variable speed uh, that changes at uh, configurable paces within the same clip, which is really cool technology. Um, so this is the clip that we'll be working with here. Um, I'm gonna turn this on for a second here. And uh, this is some humor at my expense. So enjoy that, that's the clip, all right? <laughs> so looking at what we do, this is flipped on the control coming out of the box pops into the upper right hand corner that feels natural to me. So I'm gonna leave it right there. You could move it if you wanted to. Um, but there's some interesting things which I'll just jump through. So to understand how the control works, in fact, why don't I just start with a blank clip here so you can get a better sense right out of the gate. When we turn this on, this is what it looks like. There's nothing here. You can drag along the bottom here to kind of scrub through. You can drag the top as well. That plays in the other monitor, which I found a little bit confusing. So I'd recommend using the bottom one here just so it plays within the typical playback for everything else. Uh, you can add keyframes just like you would in the effects panel, except it's specific to up here. So that's pretty familiar in that amount of control. What is kind of confusing though, is that once you put a keyframe out there, you have these draggable things which go left and right and maybe move top to bottom, bottom to top. The manual has not been updated yet for what this actually does. So I have played around with this quite a bit, trying to figure out what it does and, and how it functions a little bit. And I just want to relay my findings to you. So now that we know that, I'm gonna take that part away and let's go back over here to the clips that I've prepared. So you'll notice that as you start scrubbing through the, the playback scrubber actually changes shape, shape a little bit. And that's to compensate for the remapping of time. So the way this works is that if there is an angle to coming from left down to right, that means that you are actually slowing down. Now, following that, it will return to a normal pacing uh, within the calculated distance between that and the end frame. So I'll play this one. This is just meant to be slow, or I should say increasingly slow from the start, and then it catches up very quickly uh, to keep pace with the frame of where it ends up. All right, that's coming back to the original clip. So that's one example of how you could do it. Um, and, and it's a very basic example. I'm gonna flip on the next example here. This one is a little more sophisticated in that we're easing into it just a bit more. I added another keyframe here so that it, it would have a little more lag in real time before it got up to uh, up to the slow mo, <laughs> slow mo calculation. You could make this very stark in that you could straighten this out a little bit here um, so that this is solid 100% and then it will automatically drastically recalculate itself. If you have longer clips, you can make it a little more gradual. Mine's very short. 
Um, so just keep that in mind. I wanted a little bit more of a tempered change. That's why I did that. Um, and you'll notice that the other clips move as I make adjustments. That is this preserve speed at the next um, the speed of next keyframes option, which you can turn off, although it seems to get really wonky if you do, because it does not do the calculation for you to where speed should be. It's very jerky. So I recommend keeping that on. Pitch compensation is actually to accommodate for sound, which is a nice idea. Um, if you had some kind of sound recorded that you want to somewhat maintain the uh, wavelength structure of while you're doing this. So nice idea. Um, it's there if you want to use it <laughs> and keep the uh, audio uh, in pace with what you're doing and keep the pitch more importantly in pace with what you're doing. That's pretty cool. So I'll play this one through now that I've talked about it and you can kind of see how it's kind of a tempered with real time, then it moves into the slow mode transition and then it kind of cuts back into real time. All right, the last example here is up here, which this is go quick and then slow down. And you do that by going the other way with your, your dragging. So I want it to calculate, get gradually faster, but then immediately transition and flip into a calculated slow ramp, uh, which is really neat. That's kind of the traditional use case that you may see with other things where you want to really accentuate the motion and that's how you do it. You add a blip of, of speed and then you slow it down uh, really drastically <laughs> with this calculated speed uh, tool and that really brings out the motion quite a bit as you can see I'll just play that again because it's really neat so you can kind of see how it really draws out the delay of my jump that is granted very extreme and I could tweak that a bit just by correcting how much I want that speed to adjust uh, I'm going to drag in the bottom variable because I like where it starts and you can see how that gets more palatable for the motion as I adjust that. So that's the basic premise of how the controls work. Now the kind of not so good news that I found. <laughs> if you want to export this, there are some troubles, especially with Windows. I have not tested this in Linux, but I've tried this six ways from Sunday in Windows 10, and there is a problem here. Um, I have been trying to get this out as MP4, I like MP4 because it supports the uh, the high definition uh, resolution coming out of this. I even tried 4K just to see if it made a difference. It did not, by the way. Um, but if we do an MP4 clip, I actually have something queued up here for you to see. It does this really weird, there it is, this really weird interpolation thing <laughs> when you try to render it out. And I could not figure out what to do about that. I had mixed success if I played with different codecs. Sometimes if I used MPEG, it had reasonable quality and it came out all in one piece. Although I'm finding today that for some reason, I think I may have had a Windows update since I tested some of that out. It doesn't work anymore. It comes out without the video. So there's a little bit of a bug going on there. And that's a problem to get this out. The only codec I could actually find right now that works for me uh, was the Web M, uh, let's see, this one, Web M. <laughs> and it does all come out, but the quality is not super great. It's actually pretty low, and it's not what I would want to use in a, you know, really even their personal or professional project. That will get it out with the effect, but there's some room for improvement here. This, this, I tried these here. This is what I mentioned, the 4K. Uh, again, same results. Um, there just seems to be a little bit of a problem there. Um, I think I played with some of these other ones as well where I just couldn't get it out with the effect. So, uh, KDE, if you happen to be watching this, I love this idea. It needs a little fixing, at least on Windows. <laughs> so maybe we can get there in the next, uh, next bug fix, I hope. All right. So that is the concept. Do play with it and see where it's going because this is obviously not the way it should be. Um, there's room for improvement, but the technology is coming, and that in, in itself is very exciting. It's it's thrilling to see that there's going to be another new option in Caden Live, which is, by the way, free and open source. And otherwise, I, this is like the first time that we've tried something new where it didn't quite enter in correctly, in my opinion. Uh, the tool is otherwise very high performing. I think it outperforms commercial products. Uh, we tried to stack this up, I believe, once with Adobe Premiere, and I would... This is still my, my tool of choice um, just because of what it offers at no cost 
and still still performs feature to feature very very well so i would say give it a try if you haven't tried it before it's well worth your time even just to see what it does and maybe could even enhance your video and storytelling ability so Thanks for sticking with me to this point. Once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. We've been exploring the speed ramping, time remapping feature of Kden Live. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that so you don't miss out on the awesome things we're going to do in the future. Give me a thumbs up if this was informative for you and leave a comment. Ask a question for the whole community of learners that we're trying to build to gather up like-minded creators and share our experiences and make each other stronger. So once again, thank you for spending your time with me. I will see you next time. The real legit thing, let's see how it works. See how it stacks up. No, I don't wanna do that. Hi, I'm Aiden. This is Photo Learningism. Whew, I lost my rhythm.